All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I decided to do a quick stream about a question I always get every time I show sky replacements. So today we're going to be showing a little sky replacement and answering some of those most common tips and tricks. So I see some folks already joining in the room. Uh, Stunman, 1918. Welcome. Uh, glad you're in San Diego. Hopefully it's nice and warm there today. But let's go ahead and dive right in so I can show you guys um, what it is that I want to show you as far as sky replacement is concerned. So first and foremost, um, I even get the question, hey, is that a new plugin or is that something third party or whatever? And the answer is no. Sky replacement is actually a new feature in Photoshop as of last October. So fairly new, still newish, uh, especially if you've never seen it or haven't discovered it yet. So let me dive in and let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. I'm going to switch over to my uh, to my desktop, and I've got um, I've got Photoshop up and running. Here, let me do one thing. I, I hear a bunch of messages in the background. Let me quit out of Slack and my email and head over to Photoshop. There we go. So I got Photoshop open in the background and I've got an image that is, is a typical like begging for a sky replacement kind of image. It's an image that um, you can see as a Ferris wheel, uh, maybe at an amusement park. Um, I can kind of tell based on the lighting on the front of the Ferris wheel, it looks like it might have been end of the day, like the sun's kind of going down in the other direction, like behind us. And it's kind of giving it like this golden hour on it, but the sky itself is kind of eh, blah, ugh, not awesome. So what we want to do is replace that sky. So let me zoom it up a little bit and let's go ahead and uh, go into the sky replacement. Now, I also want to just, uh, it's amazing what the technology does and I don't want to take that for granted because if you had to mask out that old sky, you got to remember the top part, no problem. But then you got all these little intricacies in and in and around the cars of the um, the Ferris wheel. You got all the the railings and everything going on here. You got all this stuff that Photoshop is going to have to automatically figure out how to get around and how to mask. And that's one of the brilliant features of it. But let me show you where how to do it. So first of all, under your edit menu. Uh, you'll see sky replacement in the current version of Photoshop. You would just hit Photoshop, edit, sky replacement, and that'll bring up this dialog box. And it will bring up the last sky you used. So if you've never used it before, it's going to probably bring up this one because this is the first default sky. Um, and, and, and that sky is, you know, 10 times better than the other one. And what Photoshop attempts to do when you pick a sky is it attempts to colorize the foreground to kind of match it. Like, okay, you picked a bright blue sky. I'm gonna do some things to the foreground to kind of make it kind of match that. Now you do have some adjustments. You have some adjustments for the brightness of the sky. So I can bring it down to kind of say, oh, that looks better right off the bat. If I were gonna use that blue sky and we were replacing an image that was taken um, at sunset, well, the sky wouldn't be that bright. It wouldn't be as, as bright blue as it was. So just dropping the brightness down made it look more realistic right off the bat. All right, so I'm gonna put the brightness back up to where it defaulted. Let's put it back up to zero. Um, and just talk about the fact that what I just said is what's really important. If you're gonna do a sky replacement, you want your sky replacement to look as real as possible. And if you put in this bright, beautiful, middle of the day, 12 noon sky on a sunset image, chances are, even with all the Photoshop magic and sliders, it just won't look as good. It won't look right. It won't look the same. So you do have sliders to go in and kind of like adjust it and fix it and kind of um, make your sky look better. Uh, but keep in mind, it might be better to pick a better sky to start with instead of trying to make the one you pick look better. So let's go ahead and take a look at, um, so I see, I see another person, Leonard, welcome for Texas. And uh, thank you for joining me on this impromptu sky replacement. So let's, let's talk about the other skies. And this also gets into the question I normally get. So when you pop up the sky choices, you'll notice that there are categories. So right now we're on blue sky. So if I pick a different blue sky, it magically makes that. And I even like that one better, uh, better than the first one. I kind of like the clouds in that one. So if I were to, 
Don't click OK. Just click out of the pop up. And again, do the same thing, kind of bring down the brightness of that sky because it's a little too bright. Yeah, that kind of works. But again, it may not be the best sky for that day. So what you have to ask yourself is what was going on that day? Why are you replacing the sky? What was going on that day is you had a nothing gray sky. You had like a, a drab, like no clouds, no blue, no nothing kind of day. And sure, you could replace it with a sky like this and get away with it. But you could also go in and start looking at, okay, maybe a bright blue sky like that is not good. Let's try one of these. Maybe that looks a little bit better because it's got a lot of gray clouds in it. Maybe that come, comes off being more, more authentic or more realistic. And if none of this works, keep in mind, you don't, you're not stuck with this. You have other categories. So the next one, test is mine, but you have spectacular. So maybe you're trying to create something um, that's like this. That starts to look more like what might have happened on a day like that. So in other words, it wasn't a bright, sunny day. But it doesn't have to be no sky whatsoever day either. You can make it look more realistic by matching kind of what was going on in that day by um, by adjusting or, or deciding which sky you're going to pick and then adjusting it accordingly. So when I bring the when I bring the brightness of that cloudy day down, look at what pops out instead. My Ferris wheel now pops. And it doesn't look like it's being overtaken by this bright, beautiful day that really didn't happen. So this way, I get a sky that's 10 times better than the nothing sky I had, but I also get a sky that looks more realistic. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and again. I'm going to put this back to zero because I always want that to be the starting point or as close to zero as I can get it without typing it in. There we go. And um, let's get to the question of the day. Well, Terry, number one, do I have to use these skies? You don't have to. Number two, if I do use these skies, is that okay? Like, do I have permission to use these? Absolutely. We're giving you these to use. Third question, should I use these skies? And the answer is probably not. And let me tell you the reason why. If, if you are a Photoshop user that just creates content, you're a graphic designer, you're whatever, absolutely, you can use these skies and you probably should. If you're a photographer and you tell me, I take my own pictures and I want to post them as my own work or put them in my own portfolio and use them, then that's when you shouldn't use these. Because the minute I introduce one of these default skies into one of my pictures, is it still my picture? I took the picture of the Ferris wheel on a day that didn't look that good. Then I used Photoshop to replace the sky with a sky that's not mine meaning I didn't take this sky, I didn't take this cloudy sky. Um, so it kind of loses, again, that authenticity of this isn't really my picture anymore completely, not 100%. I have to give credit to Adobe or Adobe Stock for these extra skies because whoever photographed these wasn't me. All right, so then that gets me to the final part of this is can I import my own? And absolutely you can. So you notice I have a Terry folder here. So first and foremost, you can go in and create your own folder. So you can click right there, um, cre create a folder, and you can name that folder as whatever you want. You can make as many as you want. So Terry and test are my own folders. Next up, once you get your own folders, then that means you can put your own skies in them, skies that you have photographed, skies that are yours. Maybe they were taken at the same location on a better day and you just want to use that sky for the shot. Maybe they were taking a different location on a better day, but it's still your photography at that point. And so you combine one of your skies with one of your pictures, it's still 100% yours. Yeah, you kind of cheat it because you used a sky that wasn't there on that day, but it is still your photo because both photos would be yours, the original subject and the sky. So then how do you get skies into Photoshop to use? Like, how did I put these four or five skies in here to use? I'm about to put one in now so you can see. Uh, once you create your folder, which I highly recommend you creating your own folder first, then you open your folder and select it. And then you click the plus sign down in the bottom right hand corner to import skies. Now, currently, and I'm hoping they, they work on this, but currently it's one sky at a time meaning that you, you can import a sky and then you have to go and do it again and import the next sky. You can import as many as you want, but it's one at a time right now. 
And um, also you might be asking, well, what format can I bring this guy in? And JPEG is the format. So if I click the import, I've got a folder out on my computer called TW Skies. These are my own pictures, uh, except for a couple of them are Adobe stock. But no, the, actually these are my own pictures. All of these are mine. A couple of these gray skies are Adobe stock, but these are all mine. And so I took this one image um, this past weekend of a car on a rooftop. And I, I, I was just, I happened to catch golden hours starting up here and I enhanced the sky a little bit in Lightroom. And I was like, ooh, that sky really came out good. I might want to use that for something else. Don't care about anything. Don't care about the car. Don't care about the roof. Don't care about this, this, um, this wall. I don't care about any of that. I just really like that sky. So I, can, I don't have to worry about cropping it out. I don't have to worry about going into Photoshop and just making it the sky because Photoshop knows what a sky is. So if I go in and just open that image up, it will add it. And notice it added it with the car and everything. It added the whole image in. But if I now click on it, not to say this is the best image for this, this sky, but it got my, I get my beautiful sky and Photoshop may, enlarges it enough to, to not show the car. The car is there. And also keep in mind that when you bring in a sky, here's another tip. You're, especially when you're bringing in your own, you're not limited to the position that Photoshop used, meaning, well, maybe I want to see more of the left of the image. So I can pick up the sky and move it over and kind of maybe position the sun exactly where I want the sun to be and, and do that. Also, if I do raise it up, you start to see the car. The car's there. <laughs> it's, it's just it's Photoshop automatically hit it. So we don't want to see the car. Move that back down. And then we can move it left or right as much as we want and we get our sky. All right, so now that I got, if, if that were the sky I was gonna use, again, we want, I wouldn't make the, I wouldn't use the sky for this image, but if I were to use it, I would bring it down again to kind of make it, oh yeah, that looks like that was sunset. I kind of, the sky is a little too orange for this, but that, that, I could get away with that, in other words. That starts to look like sunset on the day that that would have happened, maybe even bring the brightness down some more. And you can also adjust the temperature. Right now, the temperature for that sky is really hot, really warm. Maybe I want to cool it off a little bit and I can adjust it to it's still not cooling off. Yeah, I just wouldn't use this sky. Uh, but anyway, you could, use, I wouldn't for this image. Uh, you could use whatever sky you want. This sky does, just doesn't match this image. So let's go back to one that does. But you did see you can import your own. Once you import your skies, they stay there. They're there for you to use from that point on. And then you can use um, whatever skies you import. So these are all ones that I've imported into my folder. And you can get some really uh, cool, interesting effects. Um, and more importantly, using skies or photos that you took. Uh, even if this, even if the photo has more in it than what was originally there, um, it will automatically crop it like it did the car. All right, let's go back to, um, actually, I kind of like the, the cloudy day. Let's go back to the cloudy day. Maybe I'll pick a different cloudy day. All right, let's go back to that. And let's finish this up. So I'm going to bring down the brightness of that again, because again, it would have been that bright at sunset, but I like this sky because it's keeping the Ferris wheel kind of hot in, in the main subject. Now, once I click OK, it will automatically output this to new layers. So that's the beauty of this is that it's non-destructive as it can be. When I click OK, it has created in my layers panel. Let me bring my layers panel up. There it is. It is created in my layers panel, a complete folder or group of the sky replacement. So that whole sky replacement, everything it did, the masking and everything that's there is there. And I can go ahead and turn that off, get right back to the original image. That's what we started with. This is what we ended up with. And if you look at the Ferris wheel, you can even see where Photoshop made adjustments to the colorization and the brightness and toning of the Ferris wheel to kind of make the sky match as best it can. If you go into it, you'll actually be able to go in and see the mask that it created automatically. Here's the mask that it created on one click, just going into sky replacement, one click mask. This is what it did to mask out the Ferris wheel. So if you run into one of those situations where it doesn't mask it perfectly with one click, you have the mask to go in and adjust it. So you can go in and fix whatever it didn't select properly on your own. 
So that's why it gives you the mask for everything. It gives you all the adjustments. It gives you the uh, brightness and saturation layer as well. So if you double click on that, and you, you want to bring down the brightness some more after the fact, you can. So you get all of this um, non-destructive control over it after you've done it. Um, and so if, and if you don't like that one, you want to try a different one, or maybe you want to give your client a different choice, turn that one off, go right back to the original layer, go right back to sky replacement, go right back. And again, it will use the, the sky you use last. And then I go right back to blue skies and go right back here. And actually there was one that I kind of like better. I think it was that one. And again, it definitely wouldn't be that bright that time of day. So I would bring down the brightness quite a bit quite a bit. <laughs> and again, it just to me, this guy just doesn't cut it. But if I were going to use it, I would use it that way. I'd click OK. And now my client has two choices. You want this guy or you want this guy. And again, I've got all the choices of whatever it is uh, that I want to go in and fix because they're all in that layer group. All right. So hopefully that um, answers a lot of those questions I normally get about sky replacement, um, especially the ones about, you know, can you use your own skies? Should you use the ones that come with Photoshop? Can you use the ones that come with Photoshop? So forth and so on. And and hopefully I've addressed all those. OK, I'm just looking at the chat. Make sure I didn't get, miss anything. Uh, Mario says that's freaking cool. I agree. Um, great point. And uh, Karim says hello, and Kevin Stewart says hi, hi, or thank you. No, Kevin Stewart says thank you. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for being here. All right. Uh, so with that said, guys, I'm going to drop off here. I just wanted to do that quick um, sky replacement thing to show you guys how sky replacement works in Photoshop. Feel free to subscribe to my channels and feel free to you know watch this video, give it a thumbs up, if you're watching on YouTube, um, and subscribe. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Have a good one. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.